In three, two, one, Bid Nerds is live. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Bid Nerds, where we nerd out on our top five picks of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, uh, Michael Deeb, who's over here. In uh, He's coming to us live from San Francisco, and I'm in downtown Las Vegas, uh, it, right on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, we are here every day at the 9 o'clock hour. This is the channel where you can nerd out about cars. And, um, you know, we every day, you know, we do this thing where we predict what we think the cars are going to go for on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer. And uh, Michael Deeb, we've been keeping track. That's what we do on the show. Uh, this week has been pretty rough for me. No, 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 no. I, after a rough start, JP, where I was all over you at the beginning of the week, I would say you are making a very strong comeback. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we'll jump right in. On Wednesday, there was okay. a, cars, a BMW M5 on cars and bids. Uh, I said 12.5. You said 11.5. Uh, the car came in at 15. I got that one. Um, there was on Bring a Trailer, a beautiful Porsche 88 Targa. Remember that car? 53,000 was my bid, 52.5. That car actually blew us both out of the water and brought 65,500. I got that one. But here's where you start to make your comeback. The 73 Alpha Junior Zagato on Bring a Trailer that I thought 52 and you thought 48 came in at 50. That was a draw. And since then, I've been on the ropes. Uh, the 1990 Volkswagen GTI 16 valve out of Canada, I said 10 vibe. You said, no way, 95. That car will stall. It did stall at eight, and you won that one. Um, and then at the very end of the day, we looked at a Steyr Pooch Pinsgauer. Uh, Pinsgauer. Yeah, that super Unimog looking thing out of the Northwest. Um, I said 15.5. You said, Michael, in a regular climate, those will bring 25. You went up. Above me at 16.5, and that car brought 17,750 for your second win of the day. So that, that is my biggest regret of the week. I want. I wish I had bought that thing. I really, oh really do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I would love to see your, the look on your wife's face when you, bring that, <laughs> when you tried to bring that into the garage. Yeah, uh, yeah. in the parking that, garage in the condo. Yeah. yeah, but I'd love to hear your argument. But, honey, it's room for me, you, and our dogs. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. So that day wound up being a draw. And on Thursday, oh, my goodness, uh, I got my butt kicked. Um, we started off on cars and bids with a Porsche GT4. I said 85. You cut me under at 84,500. And that car stalled out at 77,500 for your first win of the day. Um, uh, we looked at a 1991 Mercedes-Benz 300 CE that was totally modified in period. Uh, the car was out of Japan, but uh, it was offered out of the Pacific Northwest. I said 27. You said 20. Um, and that car actually brought 27,000. So it was my only win and a Yahtzee because I guessed it on the nose. Um, and then we go to a... Yeah, that really... You got the asterisk there, which gives you two wins for the day. Yeah. So that hurts. That really stings me on the points action there. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, and it was interesting too because I thought also that it might have a late surge, but no sale, and that's what happened. It was a no mm -hmm. sale at 27. Uh, 2010 Ferrari California, out of Monterey, California. We both were way over on this. I said 126, you said 119. The car stalled at 103. We were looking at it at 100, so it didn't go any further. You won that. Uh, Porsche GT2 RS, I said 265. You said 270, and JP, this car came in at $272,000. That's damn near an asterisk for you. Another Almost win. Almost got, a, got yeah. a button on that one, yeah. And then your fourth and final win of the day, with no further ado on cars and bids, there was a very cool Land Rover Discovery. I said 7,500. You took a look at all the equipment, the low miles, and said, Michael, it's going to go higher than that. You went eight, and uh, the car brought $10,269 for your fourth win of the day. Um, pretty much evening, you know, almost evening the score for the week. So we'll see how we do today. Just for the record, too, our friend, uh, we had a third nerd on the show yesterday. We had Cameron Vanderhorst uh, helping us out, and he almost got that one on the button, man. He, yeah, yeah. he was really strong on that car and uh, yeah. uh, the Land Rover, that is. But uh, anyways, yeah. we have a whole new batch of cars for you today that we're going to do some predictions on. These are the last cars of the week for us, uh, and we're pretty excited about them. Let's, uh, let's get to the cars, Michael D. What do we got to start with? Cool. So let's go on to cars and bids. Doug DeMiro is showing us a 2002 Volkswagen Eurovan, the MV Weekender, the Westfalia pop-up camper. 
a super cool car. Uh, just a couple of owners. Black Magic is a metallic black paint. Um, I love these things. Uh, my wife wants an old air-cooled Westphalia, but I like this with the VR6 um, and, you know, a few more creature comforts. I think these are pretty neat. Uh, out of Bainbridge Island, Washington. Do you know where that is? I do. That is uh, directly across the Puget Sound from Seattle. A lot of people commute from there because it's, uh, it's about a 15-minute ferry ride. But an hour and a yeah. half wait to get on the ferry, but that said. Uh, I, I see. So you have to ferry. No bridge there. Yep. Uh, anyway, that's where this car is located. It has just 121,000 miles. Um, I don't think there's any stories with this vehicle. It's just a just a straight-up used Westphalia Eurovan with a VR6. Um, there's definitely quite a bit of used wear and tear that you would expect from a vehicle that's been used for what it was intended. Uh, scratches and dings all over, uh, but nothing major, no accidents, no nothing, no stories. Uh, Westphalia Eurovan out of Bainbridge Island, Washington. What do you think, JP? Well, for starters, I uh, just want to be very clear. This is not a Westphalia. Repeat, this is not a Westphalia. It oh. does have a Westphalia top, which mm -hmm. means it has the pop top on the that goes up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. That gives you the extra headroom and a place to sleep up there. Uh, but this one is what's considered a weekender. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll note by the collapsible table over here and the captain's chairs that are facing backwards, a Westphalia is the full camper version, and that would have a kitchen sink Got uh, it. and uh -huh. a heater, and uh, and some of them even have showers and stuff like that too. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is a weekender Eurovan with a Westphalia top. Now, frankly. If I had my choice between the two, I'm taking the Weekender all day long. Uh, the yeah. Weekender uh, opens up the vehicle for all kinds. There's a lot more space. You know, the little kitchen area that the Westphalia adds uh, just just eats up all the space. There's not much space in there as it is, right. so it makes it even worse. Um, this car being, uh, this is, you know, the Eurovan uh, was the first model of Volkswagen van where they put the engine in the front. The previous, obviously, the bus and the Vanagon before them all had the engine in the back which wound up making those vehicles much larger inside even though you didn't have that rear hatch um you know the 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 bus and the vanagon had a rear hatch that opened up uh but the bed basically sat over the top of the engine bay and then moved everything all the way forward right up against this you know the windshield so it just made it made the cavern the cabin of a vanagon or bus feel much bigger this feels like you're inside honestly it feels more like a a, a typical american American minivan um, wow. these are still really great they got the great you know they've got these Volkswagen cat kind of captain's chairs um, it definitely these definitely feel like a European vehicle when you're driving around they have that suspension that really you know makes it feel the way it should um, but far less space uh, far less usable space in one of these. I believe the actual cubic, uh, you know, feet uh, available might technically be larger inside the Eurovan than a Vanagon, but the usable space uh, really, if anyone, if you've ever spent any time in either one, you'll know that it's 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 really much less. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so the I imagine the. The imagine the uh, the the real West Valley with the camper is probably heavier vehicle than with all that equipment. That is correct, and you also increase complexity, and you know you've got plumbing lines, you know you got water, you got gray water, you got all that kind of stuff, and really for an overlander or someone that's going to go out, you know, they are constantly, you know, one thing about the overlanding community and going out and camping in your car and that sort of thing, there's constantly new technology. There are new um, portable refrigerators and new portable cooking devices and cooking devices that you can take out of the vehicle and kind of, you know, put, set up on your own table and that sort of thing. Um, right. Which is really better to kind of sort and upgrade and get new stuff as things progress. Whereas if you're stuck with the old technology that was built in one of these back in 2000 or say a Vanagon in, in the 90s or even further back, do you really want to be using a gas stove from you know, 50 or 30 years ago or 20 years ago? I don't know. Um, this is a fantastic uh, car for taking out for the weekend or camping for a week. Uh, that captain's The captain's chair facing backwards and that little table is unbelievably useful. Uh, the rear seats folding down and making a bed like you can see there you can also yeah. sleep a couple of people on the top you could literally sleep four people in this thing that's amazing very yeah. cool yeah all right michael deep so you got a bid for the uh euro van here yes interesting so there's been a couple of more bids on this car this morning uh two more bids have come in bringing it up to seven thousand eight hundred dollars on 12 bids mm. um i like this thing i think it's gonna sell uh i'm gonna go 
$9,250 and it sells. Okay. Um, RVs right now are super, super hot. I mean, they are one of the most, uh, because there's just things you, you can't go and do stuff right now. So people are really into camping and their RVs. Um, these were really expensive at one time and then really softened out and they're kind of creeping back up. There's not really a shortage of them. Uh, I do like that. This is a later model year. They've made these as far back as gosh, I want to say, I can't remember what the first year of it, but it, you know, quite a while. Um, the VR six is definitely a better powertrain than the early five cylinder, um, right. but they do have their quirks that transmission is not the greatest component ever um it is going to go for more what was your bid nine thousand two hundred fifty dollars all right um it's going to go for more than that um so but uh i I think this thing could it's possible if it were in the right place i don't know if cars and bids is the right place for this this is a twenty thousand dollar rig i don't think it'll make it to twenty thousand here um, so I'm just going to say 12, five and say it probably goes a lot higher than that, but I don't want to bone myself by going okay. too high. Uh, so there it is. Uh, that was our 2002 Volkswagen Euro van. What's next? Cool. All right. So let's jump over to bring a trailer and out of Buffalo, New York, we're going to see a 1988 Porsche 924 S mm. special edition, uh, JP, Porsche made 500 of these for the U.S. market, uh, which is interesting because at that time you could still get a 944. Uh, In the rest of the world, this particular package was referred to as a Le Mans. But in the U.S., they simply called it a special edition. And what it got you was black paint, um, gray corduroy sort of like a cloth seat that had the Porsche insignia on it, burgundy carpets. And basically, you got the 944 drivetrain. So instead of 150 horsepower from an Audi-derived motor, you got the Porsche block that made closer to 160 horsepower. And the cap it all off was the MO30 sports suspension, which featured um, lower, stiffer springs and Coney shock absorbers, uh, I think larger uh, sway bars, and probably a more aggressive tire on these phone dial aluminum, very iconic of the 80s uh, wheels. Uh, really neat car. Not You don't see them very often. Most of them are beat to snot. Um, I believe this car has a quirk on the Carfax. Let me take a quick look. Uh, maybe not. Um, but anyway, anyway, neat car out of Buffalo, New York. Yes, an accident reported on the Carfax for this one. Uh, so I wonder if that's going to hold it back. Uh, like I said, don't see them very often. If it was low miles, 77,000 miles, this car could bring 15 to eighteen thousand dollars with a clean carfax but i think it's going to stall out much sooner than that because of where it's located and the uh, ding on the accident history what do you think are you familiar with this model jp um i mean i'm very familiar with 924 s's but the 924 special edition is not something i'm terribly uh familiar with i have heard of them i've never actually seen one in real life um i do i do love a black on uh, mostly black porsche uh, in almost any configuration looking at the interior of this thing i mean those seats look amazing they look so good that i suspect a redo at some point what do you think mm, on that i think they probably had sheep skins because there's no stains oh, yeah. on them and the yeah. carpets the carpets aren't amazing but the seats are so i imagine yeah. they were covered and i all i can dr- dream of is ripping off that wood wheel and putting on a prototipo yeah and uh and then turning this car loose i think it'd be kind of fun to drive it does look like it's probably had it that look what do they call those the uh the dash dash caps or dash toupees or something like that yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Right. that does not look like it looks like some kind of cover is literally screwed on over the top <laughs> of the original dash like those screw points here here uh, are not exactly factory um did they mention anything about the service or you know the typical things that always go wrong on these the uh, water pump the timing belt uh and no they just talked about the equipment mostly okay um you know because that's something on a car like this if the timing belt has not been done uh, in the last uh, five years or, you know, 20,000 yeah. miles, you almost don't want to drive it at all. You don't even want to turn the damn thing on, um, yeah. you know, and the water pumps let go. I happen to know a couple of morons that are going to the East Coast soon to pick up another uh, uh-huh. car. This would be an interesting one to swing by and pick up and bring home. What do you think of That's that? That's a brilliant idea. I yeah, think so. yeah. I <laughs> love this car. I used to, I mean, people used to hate 924s. Uh, everyone wanted a 944, but now 924s with a 9 
nine forty four engine. What more could you want? Uh, yeah. Boy, I'm I'm yeah. I'm pretty stoked about this car. This would be a great driver car. What's your bid? Yeah, so Frank Hall turned me onto this. I saw one in Northern California while I was in Vegas, and Frank, our classic tech at God and Porsche, said. This was cool because it was lighter than a 944 and narrower, so it's slightly more aerodynamic. So it mm -hmm. was like quicker off the line and faster down the road. Uh, so from a spec standpoint, this is actually a superior car. Uh, it's at $8,500 on, uh, let's see, just a few bids, five bids. Um, I still think there's a little bit of room, uh, but maybe not too much. So I'm going to go $11,000 and it sells. Okay. You know, that would be all the money for any 924S. I mean, you never see him get over 10. Uh, but given that this is a special edition, uh, yep. if, boy, I, this is a tough one. You said 11 what? 11.9 or 11.5? 11, 11,000. 11,000. How many bids do we have on this car five. so far? Five. Just five, five bids. Not a lot of action. Who uh I'm going to I'm going to bet the under and say it stalls out all and right. go 10.9. <laughs> I'm going to so go you. right under your butt. Because I honestly, I mean, I, that's actually, you know, you, you've been doing this to me all week. You've been kind of picking my numbers. Um, I think you're right. I think this car is worth around, I mean, 11 would be all the money. Um, yeah, I think so. If it were, if it were a little nicer um, and lower miles, I could see one of these. I, I We haven't seen a fresh one. We haven't seen no. a 20 something thousand mile perfect 924 no. for sale ever uh yeah. and i would love to find one in a garage and get it on one of these platforms and see it break thirty thousand dollars but this one ain't going to be that one so yeah. all right moving so on me, oh sorry go ahead again. your bid was uh, 10 nine. 10 nine. you were at eleven thousand, right yep absolutely yep yeah. all right okay cool kissing your so butt on that one let's say uh let's stay on bring a trailer and uh jp if you hadn't figured out by now uh the 997 911 gt3 uh from porsche is one of my all-time favorite cars so out of davidson north carolina where steph curry went to college um <laughs> we are being offered a 2007 911 gt3 rs with just 9,000 miles um, in the beautiful bright orange this car does have ceramic brakes which was really the big auction you either the you either got ceramics or you got steels. Uh, this car has it. No stories, no flaws, no runs, no drips, no errors. Uh, super cool car um, offered out of North Carolina. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know if there's a cooler car. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if cooler is the right word, but, I mean, this is the ultimate driving Porsche. I This yeah. is the last. I mo there's a lot of Porsche enthusiasts out there, myself included, that kind of consider this the last great Porsche. I love yeah. 991s and 992s and all the, you know, GT2 RSs and all that stuff. But uh, I would, if, if given, the, given the choice to drive one Porsche for the rest of my life, this is on the top three levels list yeah. um i mean everything from the color to the setup uh i don't really love the carbon ceramic brakes i mean i do they're they're functional and fantastic but yeah. i'm not a big fan of the cost of 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 keeping those going and as you know you and i are drivers if you're the person that's going to buy this car and let it sit there own it for 10 years and put 2,000 miles on it who cares how much the brakes cost to repair because you're right. not going to repair them but this is a what is it a ten thousand dollar eight thousand dollar uh Ooh, no way way more than that too what it is is the replacement cost of the rotors is yes. astronomical but i would i would venture a guess jp that even as much as you and i drive in mm -hmm. a garage where we have two or three other cars we would unless we track the car a half dozen times a year we probably would never heat cycle those out they would just yeah. last us as long as we owned it and there's no brake dust so i actually prefer the ceramics love that yeah um, uh, what do you think of that color? I, what color? Is that lava orange or what color is that? I don't, orange. I don't remember what they called it, but it was kind of a heritage color. They had sort of a viper green and this sort of lava orange, uh, colors that were offered, uh, on the 997 and, it, uh, they were exclusive to the RS. So when you see the dot one RSs, several of them were taken in this color, but these colors were exclusive to the RS, um, model. And that was really neat. I don't know if you caught that JP, but, um, as, as the new GT three is coming out, um, mm -hmm. Andres Prurenner, the sort of godfather of the GT program for Porsche, um, has uh, Chris Harris in the basement at the museum or at Vysok where they have one of each model of the GT three and they mm -hmm. spend 20 minutes talking about each different generation of the car from the 996.1.2 uh you know rs and then he mm -hmm. gets to the 997 and they both pause at this car 
and say that even by today's standards, this is still one of the best driving cars they've ever made. Yeah. And uh, I, I want one desperately. I've got an exhaust and an intake sitting in my garage <laughs> waiting to go on this car. So it's like I bought the doorknob and now I just need the house. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like I should have worn my Guy's Customs uh, tachometer bracelet because uh, oh. they make one with the, with the same orange and the beads. Uh, you can get a Guy's Customs bracelet of your own. Paint the sample to match this car if you buy this car at Guy's <laughs> under underscore customs on Facebook or not on Facebook, but on Instagram. And that's G Y X underscore customs. Uh, yeah. Our sh- wow. Our shameless plug of the week. There you yes, go. Guys, yeah, yeah. guys custom for Christmas. Uh, so JP, this car is sitting at $154,000 again out of Davidson, North Carolina. Um, actually I saw 154. It's at 156 now. Yeah. And let's, the bid count is up to 22 bids. So there's definitely some action on this car. I believe this car is worth and will sell and will reach one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. Oh man, yeah, I, I the, the the RSs have been softening out, um, but then they seem to kind of stabilize, and now I just don't know. It's hard to peg uh, these things, but this one's so clean and low miles, and it's so good. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. with you. A um, lot of nine nine sevens have uh, over twenty thousand miles, and this yeah. car is under ten thousand. And I think that's why it's going to, re- you know, achieve the top of the market, which is in that range of one seventy seven. I can't disagree with you, but I'm going to bet the under just because I'm thinking uh, people might be value seeking right now. Uh, so I'm going to go one seventy five. I'm going to be right <laughs> under you on that one. Oh, wait, wait for it. Hold on, guys. Look at this. We've got a guy's custom tachometer look at that this is called the tachometer i can't get it you know everything i do on the camera is like opposite uh opposite land is that there it is Uh, you guys can see that that is looking good let's put that uh let's see if we can split screen that with the car stand by guys yeah how awesome is that well played. You need this bracelet. A spot on. <laughs> Fantastic. Guys Customs, that's G-Y-X underscore customs on Instagram. Order your custom men's bracelet today. Okay. And look how, and look how fast Guys Customs can produce a bracelet to match your car. I think that took <laughs> right. about 90 seconds. Yeah, she built that right wow. there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got our bids in. You're at 177. I'm at 175. I think we are both very close. It just depends if someone's out there and they really want a pumpkin. Uh, Let's move on. All right, cool. So we're going to stay on Bring a Trailer. Uh, We're going to jump over to Gresham, Oregon. Uh, You'll have to tell the audience where that is. Is that like coastal or is that inland? Where is that? Uh, That's inland. It's a little south of uh, Portland. Small town? Do they have a traffic light? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Gresham's actually pretty big. Yeah. Is well, it? I mean, it's not. Big. I mean, it, by by Portland standards, it's not. Big I don't. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't think. I don't know that I've heard of it. But anyways, uh, we're looking at a 1971 Chevrolet yes. C10 pickup with. Uh, I have to admit, a, a 307 cubic inch uh, is not a V8 that I'm familiar with. Uh, but anyways, uh, three speed automatic, two wheel drive, regular cab. It looks like this car has been tastefully redone in a bright blue uh flat paint uh, white wheels the hubcaps and the white wall tires uh spray in bed liner um it just looks like a nice little put it together kind of refresh i don't think this car has technically been restored um but it's nicely appointed and tastefully done super cool throwback um with about as reliable a platform as ever has been made outside of maybe a willie's jeep is there a more bulletproof vehicle that you can drive around oregon jp what do you think i mean the c10s are having a moment this is a long bed so they uh, are a little uh, less valuable than say the short beds the short beds like everybody wants a short bed um yeah. i'm not loving the bed liner stuff in the back because that's a little bit of a modern uh touch but everything else really seems to be done right this is a minimalist uh restoration or cleanup uh, for lack of a better way to put it um yeah i mean this is you can put your dog uh, on the right side of that bench seat uh your girl right next to you put on your cowboy hat uh put your beer you know your Coors light in a paper bag and cruise. <laughs> 
Mesa Boulevard. Um, you are an extra in Days and Confused in this thing all day long. Um, yeah, I love this truck. I think it's just beautiful and simple and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, brings you back. I grew up in a town um, very much like Gresham, a small town in uh, yeah. Washington State called Snohomish. And this is basically what everyone drove. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that it's not completely restored. I love that this is a usable, drivable uh, truck. I, I couldn't agree with you more on the bedliner. Um, I had a 96 Dodge with a with a mat, and you could still see the blue around the, the, the truck on the inside. Mm. It was just a mat. I don't like this brand bedliner where you don't get to see the outside color in the bed of the truck. I think you, yeah. you lose something there. I had purchased a 66 F100 um, that was uh, – custom cap so it was like black and white and silver trim inside and i wanted to redo the vehicle it had a 390 in it which is the uh motor that was in the mustang bullet and uh it had a three on the tree it was a manual gearbox and i wanted to do like a wood um bed liner and i and restore the truck and um unfortunately i never got around to doing that but these i love old trucks jp this is super cool uh it's sitting at eighty five hundred dollars um but uh not really a lot of uh, action 12 bids at uh, at that price uh what, what do you think well do you have a bid or do you want me to go yeah. first here i no, mean uh, I'll, my, jump yeah. in. I'll jump in i'm gonna go I, I i just i believe in this thing i'm gonna go twelve thousand five hundred. I think that's a solid bid. Um, my buddy Sahan is really into these, and he's in the Bay Area, and he's you know he had a slight he had a newer one, not the C10, mm-hmm. and he's been actually looking for one. But he said that uh, the short beds are really what everyone's after. Um, yeah. If it were a short bed, it'd be worth a lot more. Like we're almost talking twice as much. Um, yeah. I think your bid is right on. The big question is whether or not that audience is here on Bring a Trailer. Um, this thing's probably worth 15 maybe 18 something. 20 yeah. is probably not going to happen. No. Um, so 12, uh, what was it, 12.5 was your bid or 12? 12.5, 12.5, yeah. Change yeah, I'm bid down. I'm going to go just a little over and hope that that audience is there. I mean, that's a long way to go. I'm going to go 13. Um, I, I just to just to go over you. I think you're spot on. Um, yeah. You know, it, I think if it's anything, if it's much less than that, I, I just can't imagine it's a sell. I mean, unless no. uh, I'd feel really bad for the seller if they took less than what your bid is at. We got four hours ago. Not a lot of action. I sure hope this car or rather truck finds its audience. Um, maybe we need to go up to Portland and uh, buy this thing. I don't know. Still, Talk to our yeah. friend Matthew Whitesell. Maybe he he can put a nine fourteen in the back. Because it is a long bit. You could probably roll a 914 right in the back of this thing. Absolutely. It's a 914 transporter. Yep. All right. What's the next car, my man? All right. So we saved the uh, dessert for last. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are looking out of Pasadena, California. Um, I I really want to read the name of this color. It's Green Hell uh, something or other. Oh, my Mm -hmm. God. Anyways, it's a 2018 Mercedes AMG GT. R, which is kind of the GT3 version of this vehicle. Yes. Um, you can get a, a, a GT, which is a beautiful um, kind of exotic car. Uh, Two-seat, front engine, 4.0 liter V8 with twin turbo charges. But the R kicks it up a notch, and this car has got some power. This is meant to be the version for the guy that wants to do track day. So stiffer suspension, carbon ceramic brakes, a little more aero, uh, better seats, I believe. This is a wicked car. This car is super successful in sports car racing. And in the GTR version, this is actually a very forgiving, very drivable car on the racetrack. JP, amateurs like you and I could drive this car on the racetrack and actually be comfortable near the limit of adhesion going around the turns and clipping apexes. These are fantastic cars with good balance um, and beautiful appointments. I don't know that they hold their value as well as, say, a Ferrari or a Porsche GT3 or GT3 RS. This car was 200 and something thousand dollars brand new, and I don't think it's going to come anywhere near that at the close of this auction. Uh, as an example, it's sitting at $122,000, um, about 80 grand below what it sold at, uh, less tax and license, which would have been another 10%. So, what do you think? Why did you pick this car? 
Yeah, you know, I'm with you on the on how great a track machine this is. I've only ever driven one on the track, and it was the same color. And I remember uh, taking off and just being uh, just stunned on how similar it felt to a GT3 RS uh, in, yeah. in just the, just how stable it was. Now it is weird sitting behind the wheel looking at that long nose and thinking, okay, how can this car have any kind of balance? It's got short block, so it's all the way up against um, uh, up against the uh, the fire wall there and you're sitting kind of far back um so it is weird staring down that the the, the front of this dragon uh going down the down the track but it's <clears throat> unbelievably good time sounds great drives great but i'm totally with you uh mercedes and its depreciation curve is brutal yeah. for, um, for for sake of argument the paint job is called amg green hell referring to the nurburgring's norschleife mm. green hell magno and it's like a flat metallic you know opaque paint job that costs nine thousand dollars you're not getting that money back like yeah. nobody's gonna pay a premium for that color yeah know. and it seems like most of them i've ever seen are this color so it's not right. even like you know it's like you got to pay extra for this color and yet it's common um mm. you know that that would bug the heck out of me uh totally. but it wouldn't bug i mean look at that engine look how far back it sits look how much oh my car gosh. there is up here uh, but a, the engine's it, all back here yeah it's a front mid engine in other words yeah. almost the entire block is behind the front axle making it a front mid engine it's yeah. got great balance yeah, good time. What a fun car to drive. But yeah, if you're sitting there looking at this car going, hmm, do I buy this or that orange GT3 RS that we talked about earlier? They're going to oh. be in the same price range. Which one do you <laughs> want to own? Which one would you, I mean, good Lord. I mean, I don't, I don't see how this car is the car that you would pick over the two. But what's your bid, Michael Deeb? Yeah, I would say you'd pick this car because maybe it's a teeny bit faster because it's more contemporary on track. Or you'd pick this car because it's it's got just outstanding, outrageous eyeball. Mm. But for me, the GT3 RS is money in the bank, and I think that car's um, value is moving in the right direction, where this one is in the wrong direction. I would just add one last point. Mercedes makes a, like a track pack that you could get on this car. This car doesn't have it. It was like an $18,000 option that's similar to what Porsche offers on the RSs, like the Vysok package. Um, I think if this car had that, the value would be there, but this one does not. Uh, so I'm going to come in a little soft and say 157 on this mm, car, $157,000. Okay. Yeah, I mean, boy, I... I I know they're worth more than that is bring a trailer, the kind of place that someone's going to pay a premium or even retail for this car. I think retail happens on special cars like GT3 RSs and rare antique stuff. Even though this car by Mercedes standards is special, uh, I don't know if it reaches a special premium, but I am going to go over on you. What was your bid? Okay. What? what? 157,000, which means that car needs to climb 25,000 bucks in the final five hours yeah um i think it gets there uh i'm gonna go 160 just to uh to say i mean because i do think it's worth 175 somewhere in that neighborhood um, yeah. but i don't think i think that's retail um but i don't think this car necessarily makes it there boy i'd sure love to have i mean if you could get it for in the 150s someone's getting a bargain yeah 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 very good and that would at, at that price i would almost consider it over a 911 uh, 997 GT3 RS. Almost, okay. but it wouldn't actually happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it would give me pause, and then I'd be like, what's wrong with me? Get the 911. Um, but uh, I, you know, if you did accidentally buy this car instead of the GT3 RS, uh, you're still going to be able to have a great time. Yeah. Uh, J JP, you know that green car only has two pedals, right? I do, and of <laughs> course, that's the, uh, that's the thing that's going to ultimately kill it. Um, all right, well, we really blasted through the cars there. Uh, that's, uh, that's the last episode of bid nerds for the week you just nerded out with us for about a half hour uh talking about cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer if you have a car uh that you'd like us to talk about and nerd out about on bid nerds uh tell us in the comments reach out to us send us a private message uh and we'll maybe we'll talk about one of your cars do you have a car that's coming up for sale do you want to be a third nerd on the show reach out maybe we'll uh, we'll bring you on as a guest uh, make sure you subscribe and and like the channel help uh by sharing this thing get the word out we are a brand new channel we want to nerd out with all you guys and we really appreciate those of you who are nerding out with us now uh michael deep anything to say before we end the week 
No, just uh, another shout out to Dwayne and Cameron. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next week. All right, guys. Bid nerds. See you Monday during the nine o'clock hour Pacific time. Bye bye.